Ever felt like you're swimming against the current? Putting in the effort but not seeing the results? Today's dive into you're not lazy or lacking motivation. You're just not doing it correctly. Greg McKeown Essentialism is your compass to navigate those waters. I'll spill the beans on essentialism. A game changer that's not about more hustle but smarter moves. We'll debunk the myth of laziness and motivation. Master the art of saying no and explore a career choice case study that'll make you rethink your path. Want to know the 90% rule for max results? Stick around. Hit subscribe. Let's cut through the noise and get real about why you're not lazy, just possibly not doing it right. Segment 1. Understanding the essence of essentialism. All right, let's dive into the juicy stuff. Essentialism. Now, I know that sounds like a big fancy word, but trust me, it's like the superhero of life hacks. Picture this. Essentialism is like having a personal GPS for your life, guiding you to the good stuff. So, what's the deal? Well, essentialism is the idea that you don't have to do everything, you just have to do the right things. It's like decluttering your closet, but instead of old clothes, you're tossing out unnecessary tasks and focusing on the ones that make a real impact. Let's keep it real. We'd all play this crazy game of juggling work, family, hobbies, and a bunch of other things. Essentialism is your backstage pass to the concert of life, showing you how to rock out to what truly matters. It's not about doing a million things at once. It's about putting your all into the things that matter. Imagine your time as a limited edition collector's item. You wouldn't waste it on things that don't light up your world right. Essentialism challenges us to sort out the goodies from the distractions. You're not choosing between good and bad. You're choosing between good and amazing. It's about quality over quantity, my friends. Imagine if your day was a menu and you could only order a few dishes. You wouldn't go for everything. You'd pick the ones that make your taste buds do a happy dance. That's essentialism, choosing the tasks that make your day delicious. Think of it as a superhero training montage. You're cutting out the fluff, honing in on your superpowers, and saving the day. Essentialism is your psychic, helping you dodge the time-wasting villains and focus on the tasks that move the plot forward. So, essentialism is like a life filter. It sifts through the noise, so you're left with the sweet symphony of meaningful tasks. It's not about doing more. It's about doing the right things and doing them exceptionally well. Segment 2. The Myth of Laziness and Motivation Now, let's talk about the big myth, laziness and motivation. We've all had those days when the couch seems comfier than the gym, right? But here's the twist, it's not about being lazy or lacking motivation. Greg McKeown flips the script on this one. Think about it like this, ever seen a hamster running on its wheel? It's working hard, is it getting anywhere? Not really. Sometimes we're like that hamster putting in effort but not on the right things. So Greg says it's not about grinding harder, it's about grinding smarter. Imagine you're cooking and you have a bunch of ingredients on the counter. Laziness isn't about not cooking, it's about not choosing the right ingredients. You're not lazy, you're just not cooking up the right recipe for success. Let's break it down further. You know how we often hear, just do it. Well, what if I told you, just do the right things? Real-life stories back this up. Take Elon Musk, for example. He didn't build rockets because he was super motivated all the time. He focused on what truly mattered revolutionizing space travel. It's like having a GPS for your goals. Laziness isn't the absence of effort. It's the absence of effort in the right direction. Look at it this way you're on a road trip and your GPS is set for the beach. You won't reach there by driving towards the mountains. It's not about driving harder. It's about steering in the right direction. Picture this, you're in a race and everyone's running. You start feeling tired and the finish line seems miles away. But what if I told you it's not about running faster. It's about knowing which race to run. That's the game changer. It's not about being a marathon runner in a sprint. It's about choosing the right race and giving it your all. We've all been there. Staring at a to-do list that seems longer than a CVS receipt. Laziness isn't about avoiding the list. It's about not picking the tasks that move the needle. Remember that feeling when you clean your room and suddenly everything seems clearer? Essentialism is like decluttering your to-do list, leaving only the tasks that spark joy. 
So the next time someone calls you lazy or says you lack motivation, hit them with the truth. You're not lazy. You're just not doing the right things. Motivation isn't about pumping yourself up with energy drinks. It's about aligning your actions with your goals. Take a breath, reassess, and remember, it's not about doing more. It's about doing what matters. Segment three, importance of saying no. All right, let's dive into a game changer. The importance of saying no. Now, I know what you might be thinking, saying no feels kind of uncomfortable, right? We've all been there. Picture this, you're already juggling work, family, and maybe a hobby or two. As someone asks for a favor, it's tempting to say yes because, well, we're nice people, right? But here's the scoop. Essentialism teaches us that saying no is a superpower. It's not about being mean or unhelpful. It's about protecting your time and energy for the things that truly matter. Think of your time as a limited stash of gold coins. You wouldn't just give them away to anyone who asks, would you? Real-life situations show us how saying yes to every little thing can turn our to-do lists into a chaotic roller coaster. Imagine this scenario. You're already swamped with tasks, and a friend asks if you can help them move on the same day you're tackling a mountain of work. If you say yes, what happens? Your stress levels shoot through the roof, right? Essentialism is like having a personal superhero guide. It nudges you to evaluate each request and ask, does this align with my goals? Does this bring value to my life? Saying no doesn't mean you're selfish. It means you're being strategic about where you invest your time. Let's consider another scenario. Your colleague asks you to join a project that doesn't align with your career goals. Saying yes might seem like the nice thing to do, but essentialism encourages you to pause and think about the bigger picture. Saying no in this case is like setting a boundary allowing you to focus on projects that truly matter for your growth. The power of saying no isn't just about lightening your workload. It's about creating space for what sparks joy and fulfillment. Remember Marie Kondo? Essentialism applies the same principle to your commitments. If it doesn't bring you joy or align with your goals, it might be a good candidate for a polite no. Now, I get it, saying no might take some practice. It's like a muscle that needs strengthening. But each time you say no to something non-essential, you're saying a big yes to your priorities, goals, and sanity. So let's embrace the liberating power of no. It's not a rejection, it's a strategic move. Your time is precious, and essentialism encourages you to invest it wisely. Say no to the unnecessary noise, and watch how your life becomes a symphony of purpose and focus. Segment four, trade-offs and opportunity cost. All right, guys, let's talk trade-offs and opportunity costs. Sounds fancy, right? But don't worry, we'll break it down very simply. So, imagine this. Life is a giant game of choices. You want that extra hour of sleep? Well, the trade-off might be missing the morning workout. In the world of essentialism, trade-offs are the decisions we make. And guess what? Every decision has a cost. So that you decide to binge watch your favorite show instead of finishing a work project, the cost. Maybe a little extra stress later on. Now let's look at an example. Meet Sarah. She's debating between taking a higher paying job that she's not passionate about or following her heart into a job that pays a bit less but aligns with her passions. The trade-off? Money versus fulfillment. Sarah's situation is a classic example of opportunity cost. This is the value of what you give up when you choose one thing over another. In her case, the opportunity cost of choosing the high paying job might be the sense of purpose and happiness she'd get from doing what she loves. Think about it this way, you're at a buffet. You can't load your plate with everything you have to choose. That choice is your trade off and what you miss out on, that's your opportunity cost. Let's dive deeper into the job scenario. John. A friend of mine had a job offer in a new city with a higher salary, but he'd be far from family and friends. The trade-off? A fat paycheck versus the warmth of close relationships. He chose family and friends, realizing the true value lay in those connections. Now, how does essentialism play into this? Well, it's all about making trade-offs that align with your essential goals and values. It's not about sacrificing just for the sake of it, 
It's about sacrificing the less important for the more important. Imagine you're at a crossroads and you have to choose between two paths. Essentialism would nudge you to reflect on your values, passions, and long-term goals. What are you willing to trade now for a better future? So, the next time you're faced with a decision, remember the trade-offs and opportunity costs. It's not about what you're giving up. It's about what you're gaining in the bigger picture. Choose wisely, my friends, and make those trade-offs count. After all, it's your life buffet. Make sure it's filled with the dishes that truly satisfy your hunger for a meaningful life. Segment 5. Case Study. Choosing the right career path. All right, guys, now let's talk about finding the perfect career path. Imagine you're at a crossroads torn between the job that pays the bills and the one that sets your soul on fire. Now, enter the world of essentialism. Meet Sarah. She's your average person, juggling a 9-to-5 job and dreaming of something more. Essentialism strolls into her life like a wise friend, whispering, focus on what truly matters. It's not about chasing every opportunity, it's about chasing the right one. Picture Sarah contemplating her choices. Essentialism encourages her to explore her strengths and passions. It's like having a personal career GPS, guiding her toward a destination that feels just right. No more detours, it's a straight path to professional fulfillment. Now, let me paint you a picture. Sarah starts by listing her strengths and passions, the stuff that makes her heart sing. Essentialism isn't about settling, it's about aligning your career with what you love and what you're good at. So Sarah zeroes in on a career that lights her up. Fast forward a bit, and Sarah finds herself in a job that doesn't feel like work. It's not a fairy tale, it's essentialism in action. She's not just making a living, she's crafting a life that resonates with her essence. Essentialism tells Sarah, don't just exist, live authentically. Now let's talk impact. Choosing the right career path transforms Sarah's daily grind into a fulfilling journey. She's not dragging herself out of bed every morning. She's leaping out, excited for the day ahead. It's not about a paycheck. It's about purpose. What's the takeaway? Embrace your strengths, pursue your passions, and let essentialism be your compass. Sarah isn't a unicorn. She's proof that with the right mindset, anyone can turn their career dreams into reality. So as you navigate your career path, remember it's not about the job title. It's about how the job makes you feel. Segment 6. Eliminate, Delegate, and Execute All right, my friends, let's talk about the trio that can simplify your life and boost your productivity, eliminate, delegate, and execute. Sounds fancy, but trust me, it's simpler than your morning coffee routine. So picture this, your to-do list, the never-ending saga of tasks. Now, essentialism steps in like a superhero, waving its cape. First up, we've got eliminate. It's like decluttering your closet before your schedule. Think about those tasks that are hanging around like unwanted guests at a party. Essentialism says, say onera, cross them out, let them go. It's about freeing up mental space for what truly matters. We're not Marie kondo in your life, but we're close. Next in line, we've got delegate. Imagine you're at a potluck and everyone brings a dish. You don't have to cook everything. Same goes for your to-do list. Essentialism encourages us to pass the apron, so to speak. Identify tasks that others can handle just as well, if not better. Delegating isn't a sign of weakness, it's a power move. You're not shirking responsibilities, you're being strategic. Now, that's what I call teamwork. Lastly, we've got execute. No, it's not some military operation, it's about getting things done. Ever heard the phrase, work smarter, not harder? Essentialism whispers it in our ears. Imagine your to-do list is a buffet and you're hungry for success. Focus on the main course, the dishes that'll satisfy your goals. Essentialism teaches us to dive into the important stuff, not get lost in the side dishes. It's not about being a productivity wizard. It's about making choices. By eliminating the non-essentials and delegating wisely, you pave the way for the grand finale, executing the vital tasks. It's like creating a streamlined playlist for your day. Now, I know life isn't always a smooth ride. There might be bumps, 
detours, and unexpected popples. Essentialism doesn't promise a perfect road, but it's your GPS, helping you navigate with purpose. So my friends, as you go about your day, remember the trio, eliminate what's holding you back, delegate what can be shared, and execute the vital tasks with intent. Statement 7. Mindful Decision Making Now, let's talk about something crucial making decisions. We'd all do it every day, right? It could be about what to have for breakfast, whether to take that new job, or even choosing what movie to watch. Essentialism shines a light on this by saying, hey, let's not make decisions on autopilot. Let's be mindful about it. Picture this scenario, you're at a restaurant scanning the menu. Now, if you're not paying attention, you might end up with something you didn't really want. That's a bit like life, isn't it? Essentialism nudges us to be like a savvy diner, looking at the options, considering what we truly want, and then making a choice that satisfies our hunger for fulfillment. Real talk, sometimes decisions can feel like a whirlwind. Essentialism is like your decision-making GPS, helping you navigate through the chaos. It's about taking a moment, stepping back, and asking yourself, does this align with what I value? Does it bring me closer to my goals? Let me share a little story. Imagine you're offered a fantastic job, great pay, corner office, the whole shebang, but it requires you to relocate. Now, a non-essentialist might jump at the opportunity without much thought. An essentialist, on the other hand, takes a beat. They consider the impact on their personal life, their values, and whether this move aligns with their bigger picture. It's not about making decisions just for the sake of making them. Essentialism challenges us to be intentional architects of our choices. Think of it as building a house you wouldn't randomly throw bricks together right. You plan, consider the foundation, and make sure every brick has a purpose. That's what mindful decision-making is all about. And here's the cool part, being mindful about decisions doesn't mean you have to overthink everything. It's not about turning every choice into a philosophical debate. It's about having a compass, a north star guiding your choices. Essentialism teaches us that every decision, big or small, shapes our journey. So let's make those decisions count. Remember, it's like having a personal coach in your mind, whispering, hey, is this really what you want? Does this align with where you want to go? It's a game changer, my friends, in crafting a life that resonates with your core. Segment 8. The 90% Rule. All right, buckle up, because this is the part where things get seriously interesting, the 90% rule. It's like the secret sauce of essentialism, and once you get it, everything just clicks into place. So imagine you've got this to-do list, right? Tasks, tasks, and more tasks staring at you. Now, the 90% rule is your game plan for tackling that mountain of stuff. Forget about spreading yourself thin. We're all about efficiency and results here. Picture this on that list. There's a mix of things. Some are kind of important, and some are like superstar level crucial. Now, here's the kicker. The 90% rule says, hey, focus on that vital 10% and magic will happen. See, it's about identifying the tasks that pack the most punch. What are the gems that, when you tackle them, create a ripple effect, making everything else easier or even unnecessary? It's not about doing everything. It's about doing the right things. Think of it like gardening. You've got a bunch of plants, but there's that one flower that, when nurtured, brings life to the whole garden. The 90% rule is about finding that flower in your to-do list and giving it the attention it deserves. Now, why is this rule a game changer? Well, Imagine you're juggling a dozen tasks and it feels like you're playing catch with yourself. Exhausting, right? The 90% rule is your superhero cape, letting you focus on the tasks that truly move the needle. It's not about being a perfectionist or obsessing over every detail. Nope, it's about zooming in on what truly matters. It's like having a compass in a dense forest. The 90% rule guides you to your destination, cutting through the noise. Let's think of it as a pizza. You've got this delicious pie, but there's that one slice with all the toppings you love. The 90% rule is saying, hey, grab that slice first. Because, let's be real, who wants to waste time on the crust when there's a flavor explosion waiting? Now, applying the 90% rule is like decluttering your mental space. It's liberating. 
Instead of feeling overwhelmed, you're in control, focusing on the tasks that align with your goals and bring you closer to success. So when it friends, as you dive into your to-do list, remember the magic lies in that 10%. Find those power-packed tasks, give them the attention they deserve, and watch as your productivity soars. The 90% rule isn't just a strategy, it's a mindset shift, a compass pointing you towards success. Go conquer that to-do list like the essentialist champion you are. And there you have it, guys, the art of essentialism, according to Greg McKeown. It's not about being lazy or lacking motivation. It's about doing things differently, doing the right things. So as you go about your day, remember, it's not about doing more. It's about doing more of what matters. Stay essential, stay focused, and let's redefine success together.